Hello and welcome to Hug and the Snug, where today I'm joined by Toby Robbins, who is the Sustainable Development Director at Wild Green World, who are an extremely green and extremely innovative office supply company, Supplying Central London, and our new office supply uh, company. Um, uh, there's lots I want to talk to you about today, but before we get started on that, we're in Hug and the Snug, so it's time for our hug. I've been looking forward to it. Thank you. So, you were um, voted the second greenest company uh, in the UK in the Sunday Times list the last time it was done in 2011. I want to know how you achieved that. <laughs> uh, like I say, as awards go, I love the way that the Sunday Times was structured. You know, it was unique in that it gave 70% of the marks on quantified data you know, in terms of, of, of reduction of power consumption and things like that. Um, so, so it was really well structured and that was externally audited by Bureau Veritas. Uh, so there's no hiding it, it was strong, strong numbers. Um, and 30% of the marks then came from a questionnaire that goes out to all staff and based on the feedback that actually came, came back from them. So therefore there's no, there's no hiding, there's no, there's no hiding it. being, yeah exactly, it's not, 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 not just the environmental manager knowing all the answers, you know, having some marketing expertise sitting in, o in an office. Yeah, it genuinely meant that, that you, know, you had to have everyone engaged, you had to have everyone on board, uh, otherwise frankly you, you, you yeah. wouldn't have made the ranking. So let's dive straight in with that. How do you get to a place where your staff are engaged? You know, I've, I've met other green, green organisations and you talk to the guy at the top of whoever's running it and they are inspiring, they get it. You talk to someone doing a sort of different part role in the organisation and they've possibly never even heard of half the things that are going on. So how do you make sure that that's filtering through a whole organisation? It's absolutely crucial to have the guy at the top brought in, um, but then it's a matter of actually changing the whole culture of the organisation uh, to actually make it, uh, make it happen. Uh, for us that absolutely starts you know, right at the beginning in terms of the recruitment, you know, we recruit locally, um, the induction programme, uh, you know, everyone joining the firm, doesn't matter whether you know, driver, warehouse, salesperson, will have half a day with me as the Sustainable Development Director and we will do things like we'll start off going through uh, you know, watching an inconvenient truth, you know, this is what's happening out there, you know, do you understand that? You know, do you appreciate what we are doing to the world? You know? uh, and then moving on to this is what we as a company are doing about that. Okay? That is one of our core values, that's what we're doing. Yeah? And then this is your role within the company, this is what's expected of you. Yeah? So therefore right from the very beginning, there's no doubt yeah, so let me get this process. straight, you will spend, as part of the induction version, half a day entirely dedicated to the kind of the Absolutely. green side of things. Purely on green stuff, yeah. That's quite impressive. Um, but then, yeah, yeah, it's crucial, yeah, uh, because education yeah, is key. If, 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 if people haven't actually got an understanding of what's happening out there, you know, if, if it's purely been based on you know, what they've read in the newspapers and, and see on TV, then they're not going to actually fully appreciate you know, what we're doing. So education, absolutely key. And that then follows through, every monthly departmental meeting has a green section. Uh, and in that green section, you know, we will be talking about um, things which have absolutely nothing to do with office supplies, as often as not. Yeah? So yeah, it's whatever's topical at the time. So it might be, uh, it might be the vanishing of the bees, it might be fracking, um, it might be nuclear power. It's just actually getting people to think of the bigger picture again. And how, how do your yeah? staff react to that? Do they, do they go, oh no, I've got to talk about the green? get through the rest of the meeting or do they engage with that? <laughs> <laughs> or is it a mixed bag? <laughs> uh, I clearly would, would love to, to think that they're all uh, engaged with it um, and certainly we do have some great great conversations. I absolutely accept that if you've got a bunch of drivers there thinking actually I've got to get out on my run um, then it's going to be harder um, but the fact that, that, that you know, the message it gives about that's who we are as a company is being reinforced. The opportunity there to um, actually you know talk to them uh, at other times, yeah, it's happening all the time. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's not. Oh yes, let's tick off the uh, the green section, uh, job done, move on, uh, back to how we normally work. Yeah, it is how we operate. Yeah, it's who we are. And that message is reinforced, and everybody knows it. Again and again and again. So that shows how you're kind of working to filter that message down. How does it work, making sure that that message is understood, embraced, and kind of actioned at a very a top level, kind of 
when it really comes down to you're looking at the books, something might cost more. How do you, how do you kind of integrate being green into that kind of high level executive end of a business and when it comes to financials as well? Okay, well, clearly it makes you know it actually makes sense, um, as, as I'm sure all, all, all your um, you know, all the audience knows. Yeah, um, being green is about saving money. It's not about um, you know spending more. And yeah, it's just a matter of perspective in terms of um, you know, uh, time scales for, for return on investment. So, but uh, well, yeah, and that, an example for you. In in, um, in two thousand and eight, for every ton of CO two we emitted. We delivered twenty four thousand seven hundred and thirteen pounds worth of goods stationary. In two thousand and thirteen, we delivered seventy seven thousand pounds worth of goods. So you were three times as much yeah. income per ton of CO two over a yeah. five whatever year period yeah. that was. Yeah. Um, so what that means is that our fuel bill is a third of what it would be if we were still operating the same way as we were in two thousand and eight, and as Frankly, our competitors are still operating. And that's a big saving. That's on the bottom line every year. Um, so getting that that understanding, that that perspective out, that that yeah, just looking at value, not not price, and uh, changing the way you actually operate. So that, yeah, it is. It's simply how it's done. Yeah, and then we will, yeah, quite happily pay extra to do the right thing, because yeah, there has to be integrity. And does is there? Is part of that about not making maybe say financial decisions based on kind of the very short term of this might cost us more right now, but over a period of time it will make sense? And how do you, is there a sort of tension point? There? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, really blessed by having, having uh, a pair of co-directors who absolutely are bought in and support it. Uh, and you know, I'm sure some of the things we've done would be a challenge without that. Um, but yeah, you know, they are bought in. So it, you know, it isn't a case of, of um, yeah, you know, you know, I guess the decision-making process is a case of you know, what's the right thing to do, and can we afford to do it yet? Yeah, it is going to happen. It's just yeah, a matter of the time scale. So yeah, the LED panels and yeah, you know, that, that we put in the offices, yeah, eight-year payback. And I grant you, a lot of folks would balk at that, but for us, it, it's um, it's a price worth paying. Yeah, the message that actually gives to staff. In terms of keeping them engaged, in terms of appreciating that that um, that it isn't gesture politics for us, it is a matter of doing the right thing. Yeah, these are values, not um, yeah, which aren't going to be just thrown out of the window at the first uh, uh, first financial incentive to do something else. Now, it's kind of covering the same question, but I have to ask: you're one of three directors, yeah, but your job is entirely sustainable development, looking at green things, integrating that ethos into the company. So yes. a third of your kind of executive board is focused on that. Yes. Does that really make sense? Is that not a bit extreme? It's massively expensive. I absolutely accept that. Um, but no, it's not. Yeah, yeah. And, and absolutely, I, I'm, I'm quite happy to, to, to justify my position um, because of the amount of business we win on the back of the strength of our green credentials. Um, yeah, we are in a different place from our competitors. Um, working all the way upstream, you know, along the whole value chain, um, you know, with suppliers, 83% of our tier one suppliers have now got 14,001 uh, or EMAS uh, certificated. Sometimes I've provided consultancy to help them do that. You know, I'm now trying to push that up to tier two as well to try and get good practice all the way along uh, you know, the value chain. Uh, from customers' point of view, you know, all the proactive account management efforts and so on that we've put in to actually help them reduce their environmental impact, you know, that's led to a whole lot of consultancy business you know, in terms of, of um, obviously green team meetings and things like that, but also uh, implementation of standards like 14,001. So therefore, you know, there's added value coming uh, from it. You know, the bit where it gets more difficult is um, where competitors phone up and say, you know, you're doing this, um, how, um, you know, would you mind telling us? You know, because quite simply, you know, we want to improve best practice across the whole industry and it would be ethically wrong if I weren't therefore to actually give some hints and tips. So I'm, I'm delighted, you know, I've got a, a case of beer sitting in, in my office at the moment from a, from a competitor uh, who I was able to, to give some advice to. And yeah, clearly the salespeople are a bit uneasy about that, that, that kind yeah. of thing. But that just keeps the pressure on to, to go further. Yeah. 
yeah. I suppose, yeah, if sharing those learnings, yeah. then maybe you just need to, to, to do further and... Abs absolutely, and, and it just re-emphasizes that, you know, it's not skin deep, you know, there is integrity, you know, these are the company's values, uh, and it, it, it's, it's our job to, to uh, uh, spread that as widely as possible, hence, you know, the lecturing at, at uh, you know, Brunel University and Sussex University and so on, you know, anything we can do to actually help promote best practice or better practice, um, yeah, we'll do. So what would you say in kind of in short form, because I'm sure you give whole seminars on this, mm. um, a business that's maybe right at the start of their journey of realising that maybe fundamentally they're not that sustainable, where should they first start to look to make changes but, but proper changes that will actually make an actual difference to them and to their impact? Okay, um, absolutely, a structured approach is required. You know, nothing will happen without buying from, from chief exec. You know, he's got to be behind it. Um, you know, I've been to, to lots of, of companies where the, uh, you know, there's a green team, you know, lots of passionate people all wanting to do the right thing, set up a recycling scheme and so on. Um, but that, that's a bit like um, you know, seed landing on, on rocks, you know, a little, you know, unless, you know, uh, you know, can't put down roots. Um, so a structured approach is absolutely needed. So get chief exec buying into it, clear message to everybody within the company, this is happening. Um, yeah, there's no debate, it is happening. Uh, then get the baselines, measure everything. Yeah, where are we on electricity and, and water and, uh, and gas and so on to actually understand what the opportunities are. Um, you know, the the uh, approach of, of having a, an environmental management system, yeah, understanding um, where all the environmental aspects and interactions actually are, um, provides a structure and a framework that can then be worked on to actually give it legs to follow through. And then very briefly, is it worth it? <laughs> you know, because a lot of people say it's a lot of effort, do we really want to be more green? My goodness me, I, I, yeah, I, Not from the heart, but I'm, I'm you know, putting myself <laughs> in the mindset of a, a yeah. chief exec. There is no other way to be, and yeah, I'm delighted at, at the uh, fact that, that more and more large companies are, are realising that and coming on board. Yeah, obviously the likes of Paul Pullman at, uh, at Unilever and in Cheshire you know, over at B&Q. Um, yeah, the, the, yeah, and, and M and S, you know, just around the corner. Um, yeah, getting names like that actually buying into it uh, absolutely emphasises that it makes commercial sense. So yes. All right. Well, that's all from Hugging the Snug. Thanks very much.